hello and welcome to recapping with delora and ashley please follow us on instagram facebook and twitter at recapping podcast also rate review and subscribe to our show on your favorite podcast platform we're on all the things we want to hear your thoughts on the movies and shows we review Leave us a comment on Apple Podcasts or our YouTube channel, and we will read them during the show. Or reach out to us on social media. We love talking all things entertainment and pop culture with you. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. Ashley, OMG, pun intended. I was about to say, Can has you to be. Believe. <laughs> I'm just really excited for our podcast because we have someone special. Absolutely. Hi. Welcome on Kylia. Marketing extraordinaire. This is where we need like sound bites, you know, Ashley, where we just have an applause But We can do that. We'll figure it out in the edit at some point, how to put just, in our sound bites. Like have a Gaga segment that says applause. applause. In the meantime. Welcome, Kylia. Shout out to our listeners. She is literally day one. She is my girlfriend for, we've been friends for years now. I don't even know like how many right now. But as I mentioned, she's a marketing extraordinaire. And she texted me. She's always constantly texting me and telling us about the podcast, which I love and appreciate. So thank you for feedback. Mm -hmm. And she's like, let's talk about the Super Bowl halftime show and commercials. I'm like, absolutely freaking lovely <laughs> Kylia welcome welcome to the podcast thank you so much I'm so excited to be here as you mentioned day one I listen you know pretty much on every movie or show that I have watched and you have definitely turned me into a pop culture consumer I guess <laughs> okay <laughs> love it day, I used to just watch listen to the recaps but now like okay I need to figure out what's going on in the world and I look to you two just to, you know, have my my moment and my girl time on, you know, my my commute to, or drop off and pick up and such. So love the pod. Well, thank it you so much. Privilege. Yes. And thank this is why you. I really have to cut down on my cussing. Because if y'all are listening, when y'all doing drop off and pick up, I can't have the kids <laughs> hearing me <laughs> dropping all these bombs. So thank you for that. We so appreciate I, having I you pay on. Attention, and sometimes I'm like, okay, I'm going to listen to this on the ride after Okay. He got the car. Yeah. But you know, I can still do better. <laughs> and he though. does like to he does like to join in. When you when you guys are <laughs> talking about Space Jam, he's like, Oh, I watched that movie. <laughs> oh love that so much. But yes, thank you for this suggestion because I think, you know, Laura and I have waxed on so much about Usher. This past, what is it, Dolores? Six months to a year, right? About Easy. this I ramp mean, up has been. We we suggested him for the Super Bowl, and the gift of Usher has kept on giving. So I mean, so excited to get to talk about this. That tiny desk really <laughs> put things in in momentum. You know. Yes. Yeah. I'll say the moment that you guys had mentioned it on the podcast is, you know, guessing who was going to replace Lizzo. I was like, oh my gosh, you have it. And I texted <laughs> Delora and I was like, you guys need to start a movement. You need to tag him, tag everybody. And I think at the point you guys had said it, it was like maybe like right after I had went to go see the residency and mm. the show was incredible. And honestly, I, I went just because I thought it would be a great moment. I did not think I was going to go and see like one of my top five concerts. And I was like, oh, wow, that was definitely top five. Wow. And uh, yeah, that's another thing. Still so upset. <laughs> to our audience members, Kylia has wonderful, phenomenal taste in music. And so she loves talking about live concerts as well. So can't wait to get more tea on that residency. But Let's talk about the Super Bowl, February 11th, 2024. It was the San Francisco 49ers versus the Kansas City Chiefs, a repeat of 2020. The Chiefs end up winning in overtime. And as Ashley mentioned in our headlines and hot topics, it was the most watched show since 1969's moon landing with 123.7 million viewers crazy the article i saw too they were like oh you know it's obviously gonna be a good matchup blame it on the t-swift effect i'm like 
No one mentioned Usher in this article, and y'all have lost your minds. That is the only reason I watched the Super Bowl and cared about it this year. Period. So many people, yeah. like, Ashley and I talk about this all the time, especially when we don't care about the lineups. It's like, I'm here for the halftime show and the commercials. Mm -hmm. How about you, Kylia? You live the exact same on the thing. West I Coast. Looking forward to, I was looking forward to the halftime show. Um, all friends and family, they said, hey, the, the football is this kind of what's going around it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like the the prequel. So I was definitely in for the halftime show. Made sure I paid attention to the commercials um, uh, for today in our discussion. But yeah, the game. And I live in I live in the Bay Area. I live in Oakland. Yes. So it's <laughs> kind of feel bad that I wasn't super excited about watching the 40 Niners, <laughs> But, you know. <laughs> It was it Usher. It, it was an Usher concert featuring football, as I kept Period. saying. Period. Period. All right. So let's talk about this halftime show. The length was 15 minutes, the longest of any halftime show in history. Uh, this is also Rock Nation's fifth halftime show led by the Jay-Z. It was a beautiful showcase of Usher's 30-year career. Let's talk about our ratings of this halftime show. Since there isn't any Rotten Tomatoes, I picked three headlines. So the New York Times says that the R&B star delivered a ruckus Atlanta party and a lesson in intimate showmanship. Deadline, however, said that Usher fizzles in Super Bowl halftime show, despite Alicia Keys and guest stars galore. And Hater. Pitch <laughs> right? And Fizzles. Or <laughs> states a jam-packed Super Bowl halftime show performance couldn't distract Usher from shining as a singular beacon of R&B history. Ladies, what's your rating for Usher's halftime show? All right, so we're going to do ABC, right? Great. I'll say it at A-. minus, And the only reason why I give it an A- minus is because man the the residency he was able to do so much in that intimate setting and it felt like larger than life and you were just really engaged and I think you lose a bit of that when you go to like the Super Bowl stage and I wanted him to maybe spend a little bit more time in different places so that he could find a way to like really fill it up but at the end of the day it was an incredible show I actually had to go back and watch it the second time the second time I had greater appreciation for it because it felt like I could look at it with a new lens versus looking at it and comparing it to and being uh, on the edge show. of your seat because you you're not knowing what's the next song or who's the next guest right yeah 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 and I was kind of out of like critique mode and just more so like laid back in it you know I was trying yeah. to recap and look at all the other recent Super Bowl halftime shows and I was like oh wow he, he did a really great job and also I was uh, looking at it in comparison to some of the critique that I saw I was like oh where did y'all get that from that is not what I saw it was it was great mm -hmm. also for any critiques it's like do y'all know what it takes to have that level of high energy and performance girl the mic was on I'm like mm -hmm. yeah okay miss me with the fizzle that's crazy it's an A for me I agree with a lot of what Kylia said. I think J Jermaine Dupri killed me with his socks. That took off a <laughs> piece of my... <laughs> we going to church on Sunday, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. With the ruffle socks? I'm and just the kidding. That's not on loafers. Usher, but that was damn sure a choice. To your point, I think that... For anybody who watched it, who anybody who got a chance to go to the residency, I can only imagine because he's cramming so much into just 15 minutes and he's moving. There's so much movement. And I was like, you can tell he's getting winded because this is a lot of moving around, trying to do choreo, trying to sing, trying to do all this stuff. And this man is in his 40s. I'm winded for you, baby. And I'm still in my 30s. Old, so girl. I'm like, Usher did his thing, though. The features that came out, like, I gave myself a headache jumping around my living room. I was so engaged and into it. And um, there's one person in particular that I'm going to talk about once we get into it, Delora, that I was like, okay. But overall, I thought he killed it. So it's an A for me. I assume her initials are A and K. All right. <laughs> so for me... It's an A as well. First of all, shout out to being in the generation that is the targeted audience for this halftime show. Yeah. Like, I'm and like, if finally. I was in Atlanta, Delora, I would have lost my mind. Can I be clear? Easy. 
I mean, Usher is the soundtrack of my high school years. And so nostalgia couldn't even really grasp how excited and how embedded these songs are for me. And so I thought he did an amazing job. The mic was on. He was doing all the choreo. I knew those those roller skates were coming out. So I was super Big proud facts. of him with that. Yep. And the guest list was solid. So excellent job. So ladies, Usher had eight guests. This performance featured Alicia Keys, Jermaine Dupri, her, Will I Am, Little John, Ludacris, Sin City, Showgirls, and the HBCU Jackson State Marching Band. Did you think he needed the guests though? 30 years of material, okay? I think it would have been tough for him to not bring out guests because there was an expectation of certain people, especially like Ludacris, Little John. Hirsch surprised me so pleasantly. Like Same. I had tears in my eyes, like not my Same. boo is out here performing at the Super Bowl. This shredded the yes. mess out of that guitar. I agree. I think I think that people expected it and there would have been disappointment for him not to bring them out. And also just like as you Think about some of the viral moments from his residency has been people popping up both on stage and in the audience. Ooh, so well said. Like, Shout out Kiki Palmer. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, but but everybody, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's become like just a community thing. And I think that it would have been missing something if that didn't carry on into the Super Bowl experience. So I, I appreciated the 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 special guest, and I think he did a great job of selecting them. And I, and also, I love the fact that her was one of them because I was so surprised and loved it. I yes. love a good guitar solo. Oh, yes. girl, easy! Like so, in preparation for today's conversation, I did take some time to look at previous um, halftime performances. And do y'all remember how random special guests were for halftime performances back in the day? So oh random. Gosh. What thing too? I you didn't have the Janet one, and I was like, I did not know that Diddy and Nelly were, were in this. I don't remember this at all. I don't remember I mean, either. Mary, but I also Mary, feel like there wasn't as much discourse publicly about who was going to pop up as there is now, right? Because you just have so many mean? people. Like in terms of before, when we would have Super Bowls, besides these last few years. Social media wasn't such where people were so actively trying to guess and figure out. So that's what I mean. Like, I feel like the public is so much more involved and invested now being like, who's going to pop up on that stage? What's the first song they're going to do? Versus back in the day, you could just bring out different people and there wasn't this overwhelming expectation of who those people were going to be. So true. Um, Bruno Mars, when he performed, his, his guests were the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I was like... What? <laughs> I don't what? remember that. You know what? I honestly don't know if they were actually his guests or if it was curated by who was who was sponsored. Who was in charge? Because to your point, there's been an evolution on how the show has been uh, produced. You know, because back in the day, it used to be Pepsi, and now we're mm-hmm. talking about Apple Music, where you have an entire rollout with a playlist and interviews and commercials. That's a great point, Kylia. Yeah, yeah. As I, as I was just looking back through some of it, I was like, okay, there was there was definitely a period where they were trying to do like a duo with like two different types of genres for a while. Mm-hmm. There were some earlier on where it was just kind of like a, a hodgepodge. And there were really just a few where it was just like one solo person or group where they didn't bring on anybody else. Prince. Right. Prince. Michael Jackson. My top. <laughs> Michael My Jackson. Top. <laughs> Beyonce. Beyonce brought out Destiny's she Child, but she didn't yeah, bring out anyone say. else, though. Like, it was within, you know, her mm-hmm. scope. You understand what I mean? Yeah, Rihanna, Lady Gaga held her, her own. Justin Timberlake, unfortunately. Um, that was a <laughs> disappointment. That was my... It was so funny. Uh, Dave was saying, uh, who performed the halftime show the weekend we were in the hospital with Amara? And I was like, Justin Timberlake in Minneapolis <laughs> like I remember it because I'm like he should have brought out in sing and then he did this horrible Prince tribute it was just not great anyway you know he was trying to run from in sync for there for a little bit so seems like he's gotten past just, that sorry to uh, interrupt but I'm just done with Justin <laughs> girl you ain't the only it's one so sad, we... I love Justified I, I, back girl. Back, but I'm back just like I'm done with this guy <laughs> same same so 
I'm not gonna lie. Usher was giving me the greatest showman in in this intro. Okay, I was like, okay, definitely Vegas showman. Um, again, the mic was on, and looking at the set list, Ashley brought this up before we were on mic. My way was the first song. Yes. Yep. But on all these lists, they're saying Caught Up was number one. So did you all have any predictions on the first song? Yeah, I, I definitely knew it was going to be my way. Like, it's just like a great opener, you know what I mean? And like, the, as you think about, you know, him showing up for where it started, I think it's like the 25th anniversary of my way was uh, last year. So it's just like 20 years of confession this year. Where's the yeah, time like gone? You, you gotta Where's the time? It. Say that one more time. I said, not, she said, where'd the time go? I said, not on his face, because that man is still fine as hell. <laughs> but yeah, they, they they had to do it. He had to start there. And it's funny, because it's just like, are people going to get it right? Are they going to correct themselves? Or they just like, don't care? All the articles I'm seeing <laughs> literally say caught up. And I'm like, for the people who bet on this, because this was like a Vegas bet, I think, of what the oh, yes. song was going to be. Was. Like, yeah. y'all got to get this accurate. But you definitely caught it, Kylie. You know what mine was, is I thought he was going to start with nice and slow, but he was going to start with, they call me U-S-H-E-R-R-A-Y-M-O-N-D. I was like, that's just, why wouldn't he start with his Here's name <laughs> as kicking it off? I just knew. And I was wrong, but... You it's know, okay. my prediction was that he was going to start off with daddy's home because, you know, he was the king of the biggest residency. You know what I mean? And that I was a was lot of people's cute. prediction was daddy's home. So, yeah, you know, the and, the bed. and I will also talk about the finale. I knew it was going to be. Yeah, that was just that's yeah. the most popular song. It gets everyone hyped. It was going to be. Yeah. How about yeah. you? I did not think it was going to be. Yeah. Um. I thought it was going to be without you. So, oh, yeah. So that that was actually the one that he closed the residency with. And I'll say, I actually, when it happened, I was like, oh, you know, like that, that's not like my number one Usher fan song or like top 10 at all. Yeah. But it definitely produces a vibe. It and, does. You know, the colors of the outfits that they had, had on in the show and the lights and like the crowd surfing and all that type of stuff. Or maybe you didn't crowd surf, but it felt like you should. <laughs> it just really felt like it, that could be a great Super Bowl type moment. And also one of the things that I didn't realize about the song until hearing him sing it is just it does a really great job of showing off his vocal range. Yes. And I think some of the folks that have critiqued him, which watching it the second time, I was like, I don't understand how you're critiquing this man <laughs> and his vocals right now, given all the stuff that he's doing and listening mm-hmm. to some of the other previous Super Bowl um halftime shows but I think that him performing that song would have like shut some of those folks up especially because mm. it would have been a little bit more of a, a of a cross crossover type of song but I thought that he was going to do without you mm. we got a little bit of the, the vocals at least with burn because he gave that much more life than I expected <laughs> over mm-hmm. that show but I knew he was going to end with yeah as well like I was like is he is I feel like it was going to start high energy and it was going to end high energy and also because mm-hmm. with yeah Coming with the Little John Ludacris threesome, I was like, it just yeah. makes sense that that would be such a good note that we get to be on stage and kind of end with my. Now I didn't know he was gonna do the whole, you know, a town stomp and do all the things <laughs> along with it, but I just felt like it was really a good homage and made him kind of stand out a little bit more as being like, hey, let me represent for Atlanta, let me bring out my 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 guys and let me end it on this like really good high. But again, not getting a chance to see the Vegas residency, which I feel like I will be sad about for the rest of my life. Um I can only imagine going to the tour though, right? I heard I'm going to the tour, but I just feel like the Vegas residency was such a moment. You know what I'm saying? Them tickets, but I just feel like it was such a moment. And I'm glad that everybody got. I'm gonna live vicariously through y'all. That's what I have. I, to do. I'll share some videos. I I did not take a single video of the concert because I was just in it. But my friend that I went with, she Love recorded that. like the entire thing. So oh, that, wow. that's my, my way of, of of looking back. I was like, I just need, I need all of these. But um, yeah, it was it was it was really cool. Luckily, I went before the Kiki incident, so the ticket prices mm-hmm. weren't as crazy. <laughs> got it. So that really helped. Shoot up those ticket prices, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the second round, because people was like, oh, you know, I want to make sure I go because they re- they released additional tickets. Those are really pricey, too. But um, I went in June, so probably just like 
three weeks or so before Kiki. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Yeah, my girlfriend's strategy was she went and she didn't buy her tickets to like an hour before the show. And yep. I was like, my the way my anxiety is set up, that would have really messed me up if I was playing that game. But she got that cheaper part. tickets because of it. So, Girl, a lot of people with the weekend that I went said the same thing worked out for them. Um, it's a strategy. People said it worked for Beyonce, too. I believe it. For in certain tour. places, though. I don't think it was in every city. So speaking of the shenanigans that Usher became (laughs) famous for, was he choosing violence the way he was all over Alicia? Oh my goodness. I think the first time you watch it, it's like, oh, he's kind of close to her. But like, it was just part of the act. Like, that's just what what he he does. does. You know what I mean? And I think that she like, and it's it's a love song. You know what I mean? You're supposed to pretend that you're booze or whatnot. So I didn't think it was too much at all. Me either. The only thing I thought was when he like hugged her from behind. I was like, "Ooh, he's sweaty." That's literally the yeah. only thought I had. Was yeah. Like, I would have been like, "Ooh, I know you usher it all, but you're a little sweaty." But otherwise, like to your point, it's, he's a showman, and we've seen this. Their performances; these are pr- entertainers. You know what I'm saying? They ain't down there tonguing each other. He's not. You know, it. People do way more acting and in films than you see them do on stage in True. dancing and singing so I just I was like this feels really overhyped the fact that y'all even you know coming out with a picture with Swiss beats in the background looking crazy I'm like this is so this is so ridiculous but you know internet fodder if nothing else so it's funny that Swiss beats actually posted about it too like yeah what are y'all talking about this is fine like, exactly about how good my wife looks <laughs> That's so funny. Obviously, I saw it live and I did a couple of rewatch in preparation for today's conversation. And I thought it was very convenient how on YouTube, that first note that Alicia cracked is no longer there. It was edited out because, sis, I don't know why she why she goes for that note every time the first <laughs> time. I don't. I don't get it. And to be honest, I didn't need my boo. I didn't, I didn't want it. I was Jon Snow. I don't want it. I, this is why I said this was a part that I was like, okay, I have no issues with Alicia Keys. I enjoy her a lot of times, especially that one was it Grammys where she did the dual pianos. That was fucking oh, fire. Talented. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Star. But I was like, first of all, why are you getting a solo in the middle of this Usher concert? <laughs> like this is dead air for me. Where's Usher? Is he doing a wardrobe change? What's happening? So that caught me, first of all. And then, again, to everybody's point that I've heard, like, I don't know why my boo is just not, it didn't pop the way that I think that some people wanted it to because they were such big, you know, superstars coming together. Like, I would have preferred Give Me Love in This Club with Beyonce. Um, Give me, I mean, give me a lot of other yeah songs that he has with other female artists over this particular song but i get it the star power he's probably wanted to give alicia this platform great but i didn't need it either to me it it caused a lull in the energy of the show Mm. how about you kalia yeah i agree i just think that you know everything felt a little rushed and it was a lot in there and i think if he would have pulled that piece out he could have spent a little bit more time in other places um and just really gave people more meat to the show uh, cause that, that was one of the bigger pieces and it, so many people could have done without it. Like, uh, might've been better off, you know, giving that time to, to other songs. It also reminds me of Michael Jackson's halftime show. He really knows how to let things breathe. I like well, going from song to song, you know, he let the audience breathe and enjoy the moment before going into the next thing. And I think, I don't know if we get a lot of that in a lot of performances these days, but just, I thought it was worth mentioning. It was an observation I had when doing the review, you know? Quick question, since y'all went back and looked at some previous ones, was it always like 13 minutes prior? Okay. Mm -hmm. So no one ever had more time than now. The use of the crowds in the fields is another common, a commonality across performances and obviously pyrotechnics. <laughs> and I think what's different in recent years is Usher's mic was on. Well, Beyonce mic was on and so was Bruno, but 
they don't they always pre-record you know what I mean so I just Mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting was Beyonce's mic on for her solo one with Destiny's Child um or was it just in that second one where she okay okay. I'm pretty sure I don't think Beyonce relies on um pre-recorded vocals to the extent that a lot of other artists do because they compliment Beyonce over the years on her breath control while she performs. Mm-hmm. That's one of the biggest things that they talk about in terms of her showmanship is that it's like she must hop on the treadmill and run and sing because she has such great control over her vocals when she is dancing and performing. So, Yeah, yeah. For some reason, I thought that it might have been a requirement at some point, like for some years where it was just automatic that you that uh, some of it was Mm -hmm. pre-recorded. And it might have been the video I was watching on YouTube, like the timing might have been off. But when she was on the second time with Bruno and Coldplay, I could definitely tell she was singing. That was an amazing show. I know. Absolutely. Walking through his performances, uh, we talked about my boo. Honestly, when Confessions came on and Jermaine Dupri in his Sunday best said it was 20 years, I was like, what? how, Sway? How? But I-, I love that Usher and his team was very much aware of the internet because there was definitely the seven o'clock on the dot from nice and slow. Yep. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. we were not missing that opportunity. And um the Usher challenge. Uh, what song is that? Is it uh, Superstar when he does the falsetto run? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. My favorite song from that album. Yes. So, were there any songs missing for you? Superstar just makes it for me. That was that was the one that I just that I love. I honestly didn't know whether or not he would sing it because I don't know if it's like mainstream enough, um, and it's also a slow song. So I was pleasantly yeah. surprised there. Um, I don't think anything was missing. If anything, I think it was too much. Um, I think Ooh, we could have. Yeah. I think we could have cut some stuff to allow for there to be meteor moments as well. Yeah. Have some of that space and letting things breathe. Ooh. But you know, we have an action-packed show that you've been doing night after night for like a year. You gonna want to keep on showing up, and you want you know, and your this is your moment to be on this big stage. He talks about you know how big it is for him. He talks about the thirty years. He talks about how you know he wasn't supposed to be here. This is you know he's like. This is it. I want people to my see moment. my stuff. So I'm going to do all my stuff. So I get it. But, you know, I, I think that he probably could have pulled a few things out, let it breathe, and um, it would have been just as just as great. Yeah, I don't. I can't say there's anything missing for me either. Like, I feel like he hit his top tier hits, right? Like, he didn't even really focus on his ladder catalog. It's like, let me give yeah. the people what the people what came for. And I know he mentioned in some of his interviews leading up that he like collaborated with his sons, his son sat in and had conversations with his team about what the youth might want to hear. So I think he tried to give us as cohesive of a set list as he could. I personally love I Need a Girl, but I knew I wasn't going to get that because that's a Diddy song oh. featuring Usher. But oh, that yeah. is one of mm. you talk about like things that reminisce and remind you of your school days. Like that was going hard for me one summer between middle school, I think, and high school. <laughs> that was my jam. <laughs> Couldn't tell me nothing sitting on the bus ride somewhere. So I love that song. But otherwise, I mean, Usher is just such a consummate entertainer to me that I don't think there would have been a set list that I would have been unsatisfied by. To your point, Kylie, I'm sure there are things that if I didn't hear it, I wouldn't have missed. But like Burn, for instance, I was not expecting Burn to get the life that it got because I was like, is this like a top tier? Like, I loved it, but is it a top tier tier hit to get this much life? I don't think so. I don't think I so. Cut it. I would have cut it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Maybe wow. it was just you a good moment it. to let him I would have cut it. settle. To your point, Slow give down. us a little more on the vocals. But yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, I mess with Usher so heavy that I don't think there's anything he could have gave me that I would have not have been like, okay, he did that thing. Two songs for me. I, I, I'm not going to say I missed, but it would have been nice. Uh, good Kisser. I love mm. Good Kisser so much. And I feel like a lot of people don't get it, but I'm like, oh no, it's so great. And um, uh, Trading Places. Yeah. Just like, Trading Places is a hit. Like it's... I said, he's, he's so, he has so many, right? And I feel like he made it so cohesive in terms of like the top tier ones that people are like, when I think of Usher, I think of this song, right? Like if he didn't perform, you didn't, you don't have to call. That's some people's absolute favorite Usher song and video. 
confessions yeah nice and slow yeah you got it bad i probably could have done without oh my gosh because i don't love that song i love that song I don't. i'm in the minority apparently i guess all I the don't. black so the consensus is most of his black fans do not enjoy this song. No. And I was <laughs> but it's one of his biggest mainstream hits. And I can understand, See, but I agree with everybody too that I thought Will I Am was Kanye. So for a minute, I'm like, I checked out. I was like, hold up. No, he did not bring Kanye where it's I legit to have that question in my deck because my mom was like, Is that Kanye? I was like, Mom, that is Will I Am. <laughs> that is not Kanye. <laughs> I didn't know it was Will I Am until after it was over. <laughs> I didn't. I, I didn't realize. I, I was just like, "Wait, who's that?" Because he came out before before they got to Oh My God. So I don't. I just. I didn't know. But I think from my perspective, I would have liked them to cut Oh My God and uh, let it burn and mm-hmm. do uh, the song I said earlier. Without oh, you. without but, you. So without sorry. You. I just, I think yeah. They, yeah. I think they. I think they should have cut totally Let It Burn and Oh My God and done without you. Because that would have given you both the vocals and the mainstream and the rave type of vibe and in one song. Mm. And it would have taken less time. That's just my mm. opinion. I tell y'all what, one song I'm glad that was not obviously Usher's song that just caught me out my seat was turned down for what? When I tell y'all, oh, that's, I gave myself, I was yeah. bouncing. Yeah. I gave myself a headache bouncing in my living room. I was so hype. That I was perfect. Same, I needed to be included. Same. And when they did, yeah, I was like, I need that ludic- I need that ludicrous verse. Watch out, my off this ridiculous. ridiculous in the club looking so conspicuous. Like, wow. wow. Them- okay, I'm done. I'm not gonna we're not gonna do this. I need all of it. Higher learning, one of me and Dolores' favorite podcasts. They said that they feel like Ludacris is the their favorite happy rapper, like a rapper mm-hmm. who just spits bars, but also you know when he hops on, he's gonna Clever. make you feel good. Yep. I heard this and I was like, you know who it is for me? It's Missy Elliott. Like Miss Elliott. That was my answer. That was my answer. Yeah. From the visuals to the yes. lyrics makes me happy. So I'm just going to ask who, who would it be for y'all? It's Missy Misdemeanor. Yeah, not to steal your answer, but I, I think it'll be Missy for me as well. Um, and I also just watched her her Super Bowl halftime with, with Katy Perry. For this random. Yeah. And it's random. Random. Like, Oh yeah, that goes back to what I was saying that the pairing of the of of the genres, but um, yeah, it definitely be messy. But I will say, Luda, I've been thinking a lot about him lately. Uh, just thinking about his uh, verses that he did with, I think it was him versus Nelly, and it was just like it was another like blast from the past moment. Like, man, Luda has hits, like for real. He won and, rap like, album of the year at the Grammys. <laughs> we talked about yeah, that recently. I mean, like, yeah. Uh, oh gosh, that, that was you guys that were talking about Luda and Justin Timberlake. I, I was like, I yes. heard a story about them recently. Like, I heard <laughs> from you guys, but <laughs> yes. But anyway, uh, but yeah, Luda, his albums and his features and all that stuff. I was like, oh man, he has catalog. So he does. Um, yeah, hats off to him. I, he said you heard of him recently. I'm like, is it courtesy of Cat Williams? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Illuminati no, it was, strong. It was courtesy of recapping podcast. <laughs> All right, let's talk about fashion. I mean, Usher's first look alone broke down into like five different looks until he was bare chest, okay? And then he had the costume change. Were you impressed? Were you surprised? Did you want more? I need to know. I will say I was not feeling the costumes in the beginning. Like I get what they were doing with the whole like Vegas showmanship type of stuff, but I don't know. It felt a little cheesy-ish to me. Like, I was just like, oh, I don't like the feathers and all that. Eh. Yeah, I thought the white mind. was a good idea because it didn't show him sweating. <laughs> <laughs> he looked good. I was just waiting for him to take off his shirt, if I'm completely honest with y'all. I was like, when and comes the it. moment? When <laughs> Exactly, because I knew it was coming. So it was like, yeah. I didn't, I, I thought the white was nice as well. Um, I really thought that was a nice look, but I didn't come for the fashion, so... I didn't I didn't dwell on it too deep, Delora, if I'm honest. Yeah. Well, it's interesting it's- because he had a costume change. And like again, Beyonce, she didn't have a costume change. Um, a lot of people don't. So, you know, I think that played into the Vegasness of it all as well. Yeah, yeah. I will just say that uh, I didn't notice the first time around. I, I did not see the girls dancing on the poles. 
Uh, oh, I did. Don't have mentioned. Hmm? I didn't notice I said, it either. Oh, I did see it. I didn't. I didn't notice it at all. Maybe because I was just like so focused on Ludacris and like it was a song. And he was just so dynamic coming in the, down the middle of them. And I saw people talk about it in the comment sections of some articles, like, "Oh, we didn't need the stripper poles or whatnot." I was like, "I don't remember that." And then I rewatched it. And I was like, "Why do they have on like these cheerleader outfits?" Like it was just like these little. I don't know. I, I was just like, uh, I, I wish that their outfits were different. I yeah, wonder if they had regulations. That I didn't like. It just felt odd for them to be wearing these like little shorts and like sports type of tops on these mm-hmm. poles. I wonder or, if like, they had regulations. Type. Hmm? I wonder if they had regulations that they gave him in terms of what they felt was going to be appropriate in terms of that. Yeah. But I mean, I don't think they need to wear like less clothes. I mean, I actually think more would have looked cooler. Like they could have mm. worn like some type of like tights that just looked acrobatic. Uh, well, even the know, girls who came like the- out roller skating and they ended up in that split, which was fire. I was like, Ooh, oh yeah, if only. But they were, you know, tights like um, mm-hmm. for it. Yeah, I will say that was one of the really cool parts of the residency, though, which I, that I thought was not going to be in the show. But I think that the the stripper poles at or the the dancing poles or uh, whatever you want to call it uh, at the at the residency were definitely a bit more risque, but it was very impressive. Those girls were uh, very talented. I will say it's a sport. It is a sport. again a shout out to Atlanta culture because they have some of the <gasps> best strip <laughs> clubs Touché. around. Touche. All right, Kylia, it's time for story time. We're so happy to have you on the podcast. And one of the reasons why we were interested in having you and your commentary is because you saw his residency and you've also met him in the past. So please, please Crazy. tell us the story. We, we would love to hear it. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, wild when I think about it, but I... Um... 1997, I believe. It might have been 98, but I'm pretty sure it was 1997. Uh, I had a family reunion in Detroit, Michigan. So shout out to Detroit and, and Michigan. Shout born. out Detroit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so my family reunion was there and we were staying at the Anthenium Hotel and Janet Jackson and her Velvet Rope tour was in town. And while we were there, apparently she was supposed to stay in our hotel and she thought it wasn't nice enough for her. So, so she so she did not stay there, but Usher was opening was her opening act. He was actually ended up being in the room next to me and my family. Wow! So it was it was the whole weekend. We we're like, oh, you know, Usher is somewhere in the building, or he's he's here, and different things like that. And uh, one morning, I wake up. And I go downstairs to take my aunt like a shirt or something like that. And I'm like in my pajamas. I'm I'm in seventh grade. I take my little purse because, you know, at that point in time, I take your purse everywhere. She's like, Halia, you're down here in your pajamas. You don't got any clothes on, but you're down here with your purse. Why? And I was like, well, I got my camera in here and I need, I need my camera. It is, you know, with a regular old school, you know, you put the film in and all that type of stuff. So I go back upstairs and then I go back down another time. And I leave my purse. It's like, oh, I don't need that. I walk into the elevator. Next thing I know, this big man comes out the door, ne- the do- room next door, and clips his arm in, and then Usher walks into the elevator with me. So just, you know, little 12 year old me, I'm just like, hey, hi. <laughs> and he, <laughs> wow. turns to me and says, he turns to me and says, hi. And then I like get off the elevator. And then I like walk into my house. And I'm like, you won't believe what happened, who I just saw. And I was like, and I forgot my camera because y'all talked about me with carrying my purse around and all this other stuff. Oh my. So, uh, so that was like our, our little moment. And then afterwards, uh, I saw him in the lobby. And it's funny because I looked back at these pictures this past June because I was looking at some old pictures uh, as we were planning a memorial for my, um, for my grandma, grandfather who had passed away. And I found this picture and it's literally us. You're walking into like the hotel shuttle. Like it says Infinium Hotel at the top. And I was like, no, they did not have this man going to the Janet Jackson concert that he's opening up for in the hotel shuttle. Just like thinking about like how, you know, long ago that was as far yeah. as in his career journey. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you've taken the hotel shuttle to, to your big moment, to your concert, to the concert that you're performing at. Later that night, I, so after all this and he's gone, I, I wrote a letter. I was like, <laughs> on a piece of cardboard. I was like, 
um, hi, my name is Kylia. My sister, she's like your biggest fan. And she went to, she, my sister got to go to the Velvet Rope tour because there was a scalper and she was older than me. So she got to go. I had to stay. But I, you know, I, I played the little sister car and I wrote this little note on a piece of cardboard and it slid it under his door asking for an autograph picture. I was like, do we have two autograph pictures? No, we did not get any pictures. And I was very disappointed. I was like, you know, you could have just signed something and, sent, and just slid another the door next door. You know, you shoot your shot though. You, you, I you did. Guys, I, that's, that was more than what I probably would have done at your age. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> but, it, but that, that was, a, that was our little, uh, that, that was my story of, that was the second like famous person that I had, that I met in like a kind of silly encounter. But I uh, love that. Yeah, that story is something that uh, my family and I we always joke about. Oh, baby face Usher. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Baby face Usher and, and baby face Kylia with her her purse and her heels <laughs> and my contact <laughs> lenses because I just started wearing contacts in the seventh grade. And <laughs> probably couldn't tell you nothing. I'm sure no, you couldn't. Oh my! And is there anything else from the residency that you'd like to share? Yeah, I mean, I think just overall, it was very incredible. Like, you know, I've always, always enjoyed Usher's music. Um, I'll say I actually haven't listened to a lot of Usher in the past, like, decade or so. Like, it's not like, I'm like, oh, let me go and listen to Confessions or listen to, you know, anything. Like, it's just, I just saw that it was, you know, a cultural moment and, especially kind of being in that small venue I think seeing seeing people in the right place in the right time just is so like it can it can make such a difference so you know I've pri- prioritized going I, I had a moment I was like all right I'm, go- I'm, I'm going to go and I'm, I'm happy I did because I think that you know being in such a small space uh, he did so much with it I'll say one of the things that you know caught me a little bit when the Super Bowl started I was like oh man like the stage just didn't feel like it really was doing enough for it you know what I mean Mm -hmm. um versus like at the residency it was like oh wow you are doing like this whole thing is like filled up and you're you know you're really able to like experience and see those things Mm -hmm. and then I went back and I thought a little I looked at some of the previous ones I was like oh I feel this way because Rihanna had floating stages. <laughs> girl, and I was girl. just kind of looking back at like some of the things that people were doing. I mean, one that costs a lot of money um, that people are you know paying out of their pocket to to be able to do that. But uh, I think that that was one of the the great things about the residency is that he was able to do so much in a small space and just really filled it up. And I'm excited for the people that are going to go to see him on this tour. He's coming to Oakland for two days and I'm like, ooh, maybe I need to try to go again. I don't know. But another thing about, you know, these experiences is that, you know, who you go with uh, and, and having those moments are just, yeah. you know, uh, really important. So, you know, I went to Absolutely. see him in Vegas with some of my girlfriends in Texas. We we're like, hey, we're going to meet up in Vegas because it's right in between. Uh, but, you know, my sister who went to see him without me <laughs> in 97, you know, uh, my my cousin, they're thinking about going in Detroit. I was like, well, you know, maybe I need to fly out and go to that because sometimes being able to relive those experiences with folks is just really what makes concerts memorable. Uh, one of my top five concerts or top 10, maybe I think I should might have pushed this one down and also all the Diddy stuff, but the Bad Boy Reunion concert I went to in 2015 or something like that. But um, I literally flew to Detroit for a day to go see that concert with my Love cousin that. and my sister yeah and that was you know because that's who I was with as I was listening to that music so it just really you know makes the experience for me so I think that seeing so many people being able to have those experiences with their girlfriends as they were going to the residency being able to be a part of a movement where you see so many people from across the country connecting and sharing these moments like I, it was funny Cause you will look at your stories or I will look at my stories on Instagram and I would see friends that are not connected at all. That just randomly happened to be in Vegas at the Usher show. On the at same the night. same time. Yeah. Yeah. So like I when else do you see that type Beyonce. of movement? You know what yeah. I mean? And, yeah. I, and I think just like what an incredible, uh, what an incredible moment in time and what an incredible uh, moment for him to be able to achieve that. It's like, I, I think that that, that is really great, especially I don't know. I, I feel like I'm not the only person that hasn't listened to Usher in 10 years. That was like, 
this is he's definitely you know, have, having a renaissance i think to is. your point uh musically um and i'm so glad you said that about you know really delve into the experiences because i know again in terms of like the surge of prices with concerts i'm like do i really want to continue to invest in concerts mm -hmm. in this way because ticket prices have just gotten so outrageous like beyonce has been a big person that I've seen and the first time I went to a Beyonce concert I may have paid 130 for two tickets or something like that and that's mm -hmm. just like not possible now right but Usher is on my board of people that I want to see because I think he's one of the greatest entertainers of our generation and I just like those types of people I want the opportunity to see them in the flesh and have that moment and have that experience and so I'm glad you said that because now I feel better about the investment that I have to make in these live performances. Because you know what, Ashley and Kylie, Omarion could never. B2K <laughs> could never. You remember, I'm, ta I'm talking about our versus conversation with Omarion versus Mario. Not with those vocals. Not and with them vocals, talking baby. about how Usher was, is literally the last of them who know, who's actually developed and knows how to sing, dance, and perform all at the same time. Except for Chris Brown, but Chris has his own situations well, that's... <laughs> that get in the way of, of focusing on him as Girl. an entertainer. Girl. Yeah. All right, ladies. How does this Super Bowl halftime show compare to your top three? What are uh, your top three? I will say that, gosh, I, I think I can only do a top one, which would be Prince. And then I could do like a top five. Um I have top three and I have a top five, but I understand what you mean. Yeah. So who's your like top just, five then? Yeah. So I'll say uh, Prince is definitely my number one. Um, I think it was just incredible. I think, you know, I, I love the way he performs. I love just his, you know, musicality, just the guitar and the solos. And also this man performed in the rain and his hair was perfect the entire time. <laughs> Like, he had a do on the sides, but, like, how was the top still, like, pressing Out of her? place. Not a strand hmm? out of place. It was In not. the rain. And I, I was I was so confused. That I was, was, was it a moose? Was, just like, was, a was it a jail? And, like, what? But, um, yeah. And then after that, I'll say uh, other top favorites, probably um, Coldplay, Beyonce, and Bruno. I don't know if I'm the only one that I like Beyonce's performance in that set better than her performance on her own. And it might just because like I started like, like I, you know, like early Beyonce and Destiny as a child, I probably kind of fell off a little bit. And then I like started coming back with like Lemonade and all that other stuff. But just like Same. her costumes, the song, the performance, like all of that stuff was just like, it was just spot on. I also love Coldplay too. Um, not like a huge, huge Coldplay fan, but I, you know, I thought that that was great, and I, and I like Bruno with them as well. You know, I think I could say, and I could say, Usher is three. No, no, Usher. Oh, two. I think it's Usher is in your top three. I think it might be. I think it might be Prince, Usher, and then that Coldplay Beyonce one. So yeah, he's I in your top it. three. Okay, I think those are my top three. I think there's a lot others that I like, but I think that you know, if I if I look at them overall, and the fact that I can't remember the others. I'll, I'll honestly say my mind is a little bit clustered with all the ones that I watched and caught up on, but those would be my top three in recent years. And then uh, there's a few others that I'll just say that I appreciate the performance. Like I, okay. I really appreciate it. Uh, Lady Gaga, like, oh my gosh, just going mm -hmm. back and watching. Re -watching Jumping off buildings. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know she did. She did. She was just the aerials and the flips and all that other type of stuff. And just the suspension, like she uh, was incredible. I'm not a big fan of uh, all Lady Gaga's music, like just listening to it on my own, but I knew every single song and was just mm -hmm. like really impressed with the performance. So um, yeah, I just have to give honorable mention or just a nod to like incredible talent. Mm -hmm. We like to give credit where credit's due. Mm -hmm. All right, Ashley, what's your top three and where does this halftime show land? So I did not go back and rewatch a lot of them. So mine literally are from my recent memory of what I've enjoyed. I wish I had gone back and rewatched Prince to see if I remember that as being a fave and some of those that were even before that. But for me, Beyonce is number one. But obviously, y'all know I love me some Beyonce. So that's easy. Um, Beyonce, Bruno Coldplay is probably number two for me. The showmanship 
between Beyonce and Bruno going back and forth slayed me. That was an amazing, amazing halftime show. And then Usher probably is number three for me now. It's honestly, when I was thinking about it, I was like, I really enjoy the Dr. Dre, all of that yes. whole collaborate, LA. Kendrick, Eminem, yep. all of them coming out together. That's a strong possible top five for me too. Um, but I think, I mean, just because of the fandom and the musicality and the entertainment value of Usher, he probably does slide up a little bit higher than them but they're you talk about sets like their sets were incredible for that particular show and so the, that's that's probably like a hard like three four um mm. i don't know if i necessarily have a five we do a top five but for sure i've disliked this sounds sound crazy probably i've disliked more shows than i've liked and so that's why it's a little bit easier for me to be like here are the ones i really really enjoy because a lot of times i'm like yeah. i don't necessarily really care about watching this halftime performance like um the weekend no girl literally uh dave was like who did the covid i was like you know i have no idea and he was like the weekend i'm like oh that'll explain why i didn't remember it yeah uh <laughs> There have been a lot that I'm like, okay, this year is not my year in terms of the Super Bowl halftime show. But there are some that, you know, just live in memory, even as controversial as everything happened with Janet. That's a super memorable show. Absolutely. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So there have been so many ones that over the years, I'm like, well, I enjoyed that performance. I enjoyed that aspect of the performance. But those are probably my strong, like, top three, four. What about you, Dora? All right. My number one in my top three is the 50th halftime show, which is co-play featuring Beyonce and Bruno Mars. I am a fan of co-play. I thoroughly enjoyed what they were doing, but I think it's important to remember that we had no idea that Beyonce and Bruno Mars were going to come out. And mm -hmm. when they did and they slayed, and to this day I can rewatch their battle and get so hyped. Girl. Fire. Fire, 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 fire. Fire. <sighs> And that was my song. Don't believe me, just watch. You have no idea. And then the controversy with Beyonce. Okay, ladies, let's get information. And the conservatives lost their sugar honey iced tea because she was just <laughs> like a panther. Like, get over yourself, right? So holds a lot of weight. Um, my number two is Beyonce in New Orleans. She performed super well that the lights went out. Y'all remember that? I don't remember that, that. at the Superdome at the Superdome and everybody was like was this on purpose or did she just <laughs> it's the power it's the power Purse. that I hold in my Purse. hands but she had such an elaborate stage Kylie you're talking about the stage for Usher she had a lot of visuals and I I, I, it, I had to go back and realize like oh a lot of people haven't done that since really and um, I thought that was really impressive and I always appreciate when people from groups, you know, shout out to their former bandmates. Uh, so seeing Michelle and Kelly was wonderful. And my number three is, is tied between Prince and Bruno Mars. So the Bruno Mars performance is one of my favorites because at the time he was my number one concert of all time with You Make Me Feel Like I'm Locked Out of Heaven. That tour, this is when he was on the rise. And I think the Super Bowl performance put him into another stratosphere that made him get to don't believe me, just watch. He's you know a what I mean? Fantastic performer. Oh I, my God. He did a drum solo. He played instruments. He danced. I was like, yes. Prince is kind of tied because again, Prince played Purple Rain in the rain. Like, <laughs> what? What? But I have to say, when it comes to Prince, I appreciate his artistry. But I don't always know all his songs. And that's where it's kind of unclear. Now, Usher is in my top five. And I will put him next. And then Rihanna would be number five. Because that the, the visuals, her staging, again, speaking of things that no one's ever done before, <laughs> that was it. All right, ladies. Well, thank you for that conversation. Let's close out talking about these commercials. Super Bowl commercials are notorious for being extremely expensive. And it ranges from being ultra sentimental to just crazy outlandish ideas. And we have our very own marketing expert on the podcast. Let's talk about 
our favorite commercials and if there were any themes. Um, okay, so uh, commercials. Yeah, I think that uh, this year's commercials were, were pretty good. I think that some folks have kind of, you know, uh, view them as, as a mixed bag. I think that it's always hard to really nail uh, a Super Bowl commercial because there is, you know, so much pressure to really be able to break through and come up with something that's unique. But I definitely have some top faves from different categories. So uh, how would you guys like to, to talk about them? Let's go for the funny first. Yes. So I'll say my two favorite that were funny. Uh, one is the Sarah Vey, uh commercial with absolutely like yeah, that's absolutely. definitely my top commercial for like the whole Super Bowl. Like I, mine I don't, too. When I see these lists and they have it like as number seven or number nine, I'm like, what like, are no. you watching? Like, no. how can you rank like the Dunkin' Donuts commercial above this? Like, is it just because? JLo and Ben like I don't understand how that is anywhere near as funny as this because you know I yeah and I, I know you guys love him as Alan and Barbie so I thought that it was just really perfect that they like brought Truly. him back and it's kind of like you know he's having his whole new moment uh he always kind of plays that somewhat like an awkward character so for him to like pretend to be a marketer and come up with like this <laughs> ad and like you don't realize that that's that he's pitching it to dermatologists uh, and I also think that was just really interesting. And, and, you know, all great advertising is is really rooted in an insight. I don't, you know, I don't know the brief for this campaign or for this creative or what they were going after. But as a consumer, sometimes I see their they products as something that's like a little bit more expensive. Yeah, it's expensive, but also a little bit more clinical, a little bit like not as relatable. Like I feel like people that use it might be people that like have like very... Uh, particular like skin problems or, mm -hmm. or concerns or people that just really care like no like it's like oh I'm going to use this because this is my brand but like they're intentional Michael's about it it's not a mm -hmm. quick it's not a quick grab it's like intentional like I'm getting CeraVe today right yeah, yeah. I yeah. am a CeraVe even just like user. the name is even the I name itself <laughs> is a little could be a little hoity-toity sounding a bit yeah. you know what I mean so having Michael Sarah doing all this like silly stuff that's kind of relatable and funny in like his own like way and then like pitching it to like these very clinical people just made it more relatable so I think that that just kind of could be something that you know could have been what they were going for so um as far as thinking about how that could you know shift brand perception and I did not have time to, to do any type of research to see like have they ever done a Super Bowl commercial but I don't think they have uh I thought that that one was great yeah, I've never seen a CeraVe Cera commercial <laughs> during the Super Bowl in my entire life. So I loved it because it's an internet joke come to life. It's realized, yeah. right? And I love that they were in on the joke. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was funny. I like it was um, it was whimsical in a certain way, I guess is maybe a good word to use for it. I really enjoy Michael Sierra and his brand of humor. And then I am a CeraVe user. So I'm like, Michael, I'm paying your salary right now because this is not <laughs> cheap, you know? So it's like, I'm already a user of the product. And so I just enjoyed seeing kind of what they did with their advertising for this particular spot. Another one that oh, I really nice. liked was the State Farm uh, commercials with Arnold Schwarzenegger. You um, enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And Danny DeVito, you didn't, yep. you didn't like yep. it, Dolores? Call out. I liked it more when they made the twins call back. Yeah, I, that's exactly. where I was like, I got it now. Okay. I was just waiting for Jake. I was like, now nah, I know y'all not about to have a State Farm Super Bowl commercial and not bring Jake out. Where's Jake? So that took me a minute. And then once I saw him, I was like, okay, now I can enjoy the rest of the commercial. And so it was fun to see them together and have this reunion. How long has it been since Twins came out? Was that the 80s Easily or the 25. early 90s? Early 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I figured you guys might appreciate that one just because of the whole movie, the recapping type of situation. And I thought that, that would be, uh, I thought that that was a nice moment. Uh, but, you know, some of the things about, you know, Super Bowl commercials and these moments is just, you know, showing up as big and popular and, you know, having Arnold Schwarzenegger in, you know, in, in the series and just kind of, kind of having a fun, creative new way at, you know, talking about uh, your product. I think it was really cool how they use an iconic asset you know neighbor is something that's iconic for state farm and making it funny with the way that he was pronouncing it and saying that over and over and pulling in other themes that you're used to seeing 
Uh, I, th I think that that was just a really, you know, clever way of making something that is used repeatedly show up uh, fresh and funny. Love that. Any other fun, funny commercials you enjoyed, it, Kylie? Yeah. I won't say any, uh, I can't think of anything that was funny, fun, that really stands out. I'll say one that was a little bit deeper interesting to me was that, you know, Google, they continue kind of on like this, you know, like the serious tone of like some of their phone features, you know what I mean? So like, I mm -hmm. think it was last year or the year before maybe where they did like the, the phone, uh, the camera setting that helps people like see people of all different like skin tones and some of the issues that, you know, that you face as, you know, being a black woman or a black, a black person or actually a person, yeah. a person of color where, you know, your photographs don't, you know, show you as you. Uh, they did an ad this time around that, you know, focused on people with, uh, I'm assuming, uh, visual impairment, yep. um, where they're able to like guide them and, you know, uh, help them be able to capture uh, pictures. Um, I thought that that was interesting. I don't think it had the same like landing or, 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 or virality as the previous one, but I thought it was interesting that they kind of continued on that track. I got I extremely the, emotional, by the way. Yeah, extremely over that. emotional, which it's is something you don't my, see in a Super Bowl ad. You know what I mean? Yeah, very rarely. And just because so many companies are really able to do it well, like, you know what I mm -hmm. mean? But I just thought, I thought it was touching. Yeah, yeah, agreed, agreed. I love the Wicked commercial, so I figured that you, oh. got, you guys might have some thoughts on that too as far as movie. I was disappointed though. See, it doesn't come out until Thanksgiving. I'm like, that's a long ways away. Well, <laughs> it's a lot sooner because it was supposed to come out during Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. So for me, I was like, oh, they're changing the date. And, they're bro and they broke it up into two, which is also something that was interesting. Ashley, how about you? Any favorite commercials? Well, I think Kylia touched on the favorite favorite for me too, which was the Michael Cera CeraVe commercial. I actually did really enjoy the Dunkin' Donuts commercial too, though. I, I thought too. it was so funny and yeah. really? and interesting to see Matt Damon also join. And you know what I'm saying? Like it was just kind of he's been doing the Dunkin' brand for a while. So I just thought it was fun to kind of bring in the J Lo and the Matt Damon of it all this year and tie the it Tom together. Brady. And he was so serious about yeah. this this music performance. I was like, y'all are hilarious to me. And then um, I think I really enjoyed the the Beyonce Verizon commercial. Obviously, I was just trying to figure out for a minute, like, are you really announcing the music? Like, what is what what is your point of having this much screen time and airtime? But I like the way they did it. I loved her going up into space and performing and all that. I thought it was really well done visually. And then the one I was confused about was to everybody's point the commercial when it started with people getting their feet washed. I was confused. I was like, I don't know. I was like, this is the Jesus commercial. I said that as soon as I saw it. Cause I'm like, girl, I was lost. I was like, what am I watching? Very important. But yeah. I'm like, Jesus had budget. I mean, Christians had like multiple commercials during the Super Bowl. Girl, they definitely had a budget. They definitely had a budget. So that I was yeah. a little like thrown off by at first, but those were like my top ones that I can think of. He got us the Jesus one. Um, I thought it was really interesting, and, I, and I'm not certain if this was done this way, but it looked like everything was like was uh, AI like generated. That's like, a great point because they didn't look quite human. like yeah, like a person, or it was like an overlay of a mm -hmm. real person. That's a great point. Yeah, I was like, that's really interesting. Like, if if all of those commercials were done with like AI for that to be, you know, like definitely seems like that would be a first interesting oh um, i'm sorry one last one i can't remember what what the commercial was for but where like jennifer aniston couldn't remember david schwimmer and usher uber couldn't eats. remember he was which one was it uber eats maybe yes because it's yeah. like oh here's the things that we can offer yeah and like usher didn't remember he was like i would love to perform at the super bowl one day <laughs> like that yeah. was a that was an interesting fun commercial to me too yeah that was a good one my favorite commercials the CeraV, Wicked, again, visually stunning, and I just cannot wait. The Dunkin' Donuts commercial was hilarious. And the two that you all have not mentioned that I thoroughly enjoyed, the Pluto TV couch potato. Like, <laughs> the, the gentleman who was a farmer, he's like, 
yeah, harvest time. And then he like interviewed each person and they talked about what their favorite shows were and them literally being couch potatoes. Hilarious. And I enjoy BMW's Christopher Walken's uh, commercial. I love that one too. It was I, really I, good. I, um, yeah, that was that was really good. I saw the preview uh, of it. It was either on Good Morning America or the Today Show, but uh, yeah, that was was a really good one. Agreed. And and I'm only bringing this up because I'm like, why Twisters? So Twister from the '90s was one of my favorite movies, and you know, sidebar, I wanted to be a meteorologist when I was younger. So I was always fascinated by tornadoes. But now with this twisters, I'm like, oh, this is on steroids. I'm glad you, I didn't even remember it. But now that you say it, I'm like, oh yeah, there was that commercial. I'm not sure why it's being redone. I live in Florida, so I have enough extreme weather to deal with that I don't need it in my content consumption. (laughs) Uh, But, you know, do y'all thing. All right, ladies. Well, we covered quite a bit and it has been a fantastic conversation do y'all have any final thoughts one random thing is that i don't watch a lot of nfl so i was you know wondering like everyone's talking about how much they show like taylor swift and all the shows and and, and all the shows been on all the games and all that other stuff so i was thinking they were going to show her all the time yeah i was surprised that i didn't see her pop up until like the second quarter so i thought that i was like oh it doesn't really seem like that much but maybe girl we've had enough we've had enough (laughs) okay it was 54 seconds if you must know and the reason why you didn't start seeing her in the second quarter is because the chiefs weren't putting points on the board until 49ers were kicking their ass they were other words Uh, and but do you think it's a fair assessment that they're giving taylor swift all this credit for all these ratings and things like that i just feel like it's a bit of a stretch Honestly, I don't know because I'm I'm not a Swifty, so I didn't like just start paying attention to football because of her. You know what I mean? So I I paid attention, uh, you know, I paid attention to the Super Bowl. Was like ready to like watch it all the time because of the halftime show this year. But I don't know. I was gonna say they already tried to give her credit for just the creation of Travis Kelsey in general, even though that man had already won the Super Bowl prior to dating her. Twice. But okay. So that that this is the part that really did annoy me though. <laughs> so. At the end of the Super Bowl, as they as after they accept the trophies and all that other stuff, or maybe it was maybe it was before the trophy celebration, but they're like showing her like hugging him, like kissing him, it's like take like it's just like a long moment, and I'm like, what is this? Like this is not his first time here. He like won this last year. Why? Yes. And y'all just been together for you know half a year, a year. I don't care. It's not like you've been with this man for five ten years and he just like through his struggles and he just made it exactly like, this is his first, like exactly. This is, it's not like you're his Third. mama like I was just really confused because it looked like this emotional like you know thing and it's just like yeah you won she's Great. been like, on tour know, but it's not like a... the majority of the relationship so yeah it's, it's not unusual, Kylia, that they show the players with their significant others, with their families after they win these things. But for sure, it's completely overhyped now that his significant other is Taylor Swift. Um, the coverage leading up to it, the fact that sports commentators were focusing so much on this relationship has been extremely unusual in the world of entertainment. And so I think it's just enough. Like, I was rooting against, and I said this when we did our last episode, against the Chiefs just because I was hoping to end the hoopla. And I'm like, I'm so sorry to these men who put their hearts and souls out on this field, but damn, I'm so tired of it. I still was reluctantly rooting for the Chiefs, but I was like, it is not because of Taylor, Taylor's version. Um, So yeah, it's, and then (laughs) I said it in our group chat. They had these cameras of them dancing and they're surrounded by their bodyguards and it's him dancing to like love song. It was just very cringe. I mm. it, I don't I don't believe they have anything to do with the Biden administration or uh, uh, <laughs> Pfizer girl. The conservative conspiracy theories are next. The level. liberal agenda is yeah. at it again. But I will say, I think it's, I said this before and I say it again, I think it's a convenient 
she got herself a black adjacent boyfriend right after being caught with the neo-nazi i her last mm-hmm. boyfriend from 1975 was a known racist and you see she, she slid was... ice spice on into the crew too just like wow. i said so convenient beyonce watching her album during the super bowl do you think that that took away from usher's moment you know what i mean after the super bowl versus rushing to listen to you know beyonce's new songs beyonce didn't simply step on his toes she bulldozed over him and he still had his mom and his son because that ramp up was legendary okay but she's like you've had your time now it's time for me because my album's dropping next month thank you very much yeah we talked about it in our last episode and the fact that it was like getting engaged at someone's wedding like this was usher's moment to really shine and beyonce was like give me a minute. I got some shit to get off my chest. And I think one good point though, that I did here, and I agree with this is that she was using the platform, just like all these advertisers that we've talked about to be in front of this many viewers to launch something and to announce something new. So you can't really knock her for that either. What makes her that much different from, you know, to our point, Dunkin' Donuts, Sarah Vay, everybody else who wanted to advertise and have this moment to have eyeballs. I did, in the middle of the Super Bowl, stream those songs. But then I went right right back to it. I wouldn't have done it during the Super Bowl halftime show, that's for damn sure. But I still am also listening to Usher's new album. So for me, it did not necessarily take away from Usher, but it did take away from the game a little bit and the eyeballs on the game. Because I even heard somebody else say on a podcast, like, we paused the game to stream the songs i didn't do all that i just turned down the volume so there was, it was a delay was, on apple music because i'm like where are these songs well and i'm still on title only tell them i'm still and on I, title and, so and i was shout out to tony i was like girl i think it's mainly on title and then eventually we got the two new songs on apple but kind of leah what are your thoughts on the two songs yeah i mean i like them both i think oftentimes i need to like warm up to music you know what i mean um I know, I know so folks talk about like listening to the car in the car and all those different types of things. But I think that this is definitely music that I'll have to listen to a few times before like I'm, it really sets in. Okay. But I'm excited to see her branch into new areas and into the into the country uh, uh, category. So I think that that's pretty cool. Nice Absolutely. Exciting. Wonderful. All right, ladies. If there's nothing else, time for hitting gems. Kylia? Do you have yeah. any gems? I do, I do. Um, I I don't know if you guys have talked about this being a hidden gem, but uh, the We Are the World documentary on Netflix uh, is uh, an incredible, um, an incredible uh, piece of content. So, um, at one, I learned so many new things about the process and the timing in which that happened. I learned a lot about award shows and such, which is, you know, brought up some really interesting topics as you think about some of the uh, discussions that are happening right now around the Grammys and Mm -hmm. categories and who gets recognized and such. So I definitely recommend that. And then um, I don't know if this is the hidden gem because I feel like it was like on the top 10 for like Netflix for a while, but the brother's son. Uh, with Michelle Yeoh I I love that show Um, I it's like the perfect mix of like lightheartedness drama and a little bit of action uh, or maybe a lot of bit of action but that was one of my favorite shows that I have recently streamed that was one of mine too Kylia that I mentioned really enjoyed the brother son if y'all have not watched it all right I have two as well my first one is upgraded on Amazon Prime. Love story rom-com. So fitting for this, you know, Valentine's Day, Valentine's Week type of vibe. Um, It stars Camila Mendez and she is an intern. Um, It also stars uh, Marissa Tomei. Now I will say her accent was a struggle to get through in this film. Not gonna lie to (laughs) y'all. But if you enjoy a good rom-com, you know, Delora and I always talk about, oh, they have these fancy jobs and they have these fancy, you know, kind of setups to get you engaged so she works in art world which is interesting to see and she takes a trip to London and she meets a guy when she gets upgraded to first class and it's just this whole thing it's very cute it's visually very interesting because obviously you're getting kind of a transatlantic 
flight and opportunity to go to London. So I enjoyed it. Amazon Prime. My second is Suncoast, a film on Hulu. This film stars Tandy Newton's daughter, which I know she had already been in The Last of Us. She was Pedro Pascal's daughter in that show, but I have only seen one episode of The Last of Us because I don't like zombies. So I enjoy getting the chance to see her really spread her wings and act and do her thing. It was emotional because it focuses on her and her mom, who's played by Laura Lenny, and they're taking care of her brother, who's terminally ill with cancer. And so it's it's a heartfelt kind of coming of age story of a film. But I thought she did a fantastic job. I did cry. It did move me. But I I definitely still suggest it. And I think it was well done. Also, um, what's his name is in it too? Um, Woody Harrelson, who Woody Harrelson is always a joy for me to watch on screen. Yes. So. Those are my on two. My list. Mm-hmm. Those are my two hidden gems. What about you, Delora? I just have one. I have a favorite Instagrammer. Um, his name is Blakely Thornton. Um, he has the best hot takes. He's a gentleman, a part of the LGBTQIA community, and black man, and he just speaks to hot topics in pop culture from his perspective, and it's always full of humor and insight and i i just enjoy his takes immensely so um at blakely thornton on instagram roll credits exactly (laughs) (laughs) well thank you so much guys thank you kylea for joining us for this special Super Bowl halftime show episode. Thank you for suggesting it. We definitely yes. are open and always love suggestions and love that you wanted to join us for the conversation. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and I one, I, I don't think you guys mentioned it today, but you guys called it with saying the Usher should be the Super Bowl halftime yeah, show. Yeah, Delora. I remember Delora when you first it. said it and I was like, hey, you guys need to tag everybody, start a movement for it to happen. And it happened, so... Um, and I'm just so happy that I had to, uh, that you guys invited me to to talk. So uh, of course, this was of absolutely, course. it was a pleasure. Absolutely, guys, thank you as always for sticking with us for another one. We appreciate it. Please share this episode with your friends, family, loved ones, everyone. If you have any comments or thoughts, always feel free to hit us in the DMs. Feel free to hit us on all the things. We so appreciate it. Hit us with a rating or review. We will be back, but in the meantime, as always, be blessed. Bye!